Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight I have your very first look at Optimus Prime, aka the Iowa with a reskin. So let's get into it. Now we are not going to be using Optimus Prime as a commander of my Iowa. That would be an absolute disgrace. That's all I'm saying. So uh, first of all, let's go into commanders and find Optimus Prime and we'll go over his stats real quick. Optimus Prime, right there you go. Uh, it looks like Optimus to me. His base trait is Reconstructor, which gives you a bonus to the redu or reduces the reload time of the repair party. Okay. He's got not one for the nuisance, brawler, and revocation protocol. Um, honestly, this is literally just a tank build commander. Like, why? Why is this a thing? Like, I try to come into these being optimistic. Get it? Uh, never mind. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, it, it's just a tank commander. It's a tank build battleship commander. There's nothing special about this. I mean, he gets reduced reload time of repair party. Woo! <laughs> uh, it, this may be a new perk. Uh, let's, let's compare him to uh, Willis Lee, shall we? Yep, he gets the revocation protocol perk. Yeah, that's that's useful. Uh, I don't know why anybody, unless you're just a Transformers fan, maybe. Uh, you get his voice as a commander, I believe. So uh, I guess that would be a thing. But personally, this not really for me. I like the skin. The actual skin for the ship is awesome. I like that. But th this commander, no, he's not not good. Um, so yeah. That's my review. Uh, th they're literally just tank build skills. So if you want me to crisscross, porcupine, firefighter on second thought, uh, reaching out, and master mechanic. This is the perk that gives you, uh, when you max it out to 16, you get two repair parties uh, instead of the one. But it's literally the same perk that's on uh, Willis Lee that I just showed you. So, uh, And no difference in the uh, legendary perks either. So, honestly... I don't know why anybody would want Optimus Prime as a commander, but as the skin, I like it. So uh, let's go look at the skin, shall we? So uh, yeah, I like it. It's got little tears up in the front, it's kind of digital. Uh, you can see on the turrets, you've got nice little holographics on the turrets. Uh, you see Optimus is standing on the deck, but, and he's about to do so. Oh, I thought he was going to do the little uh, like axe thing that he, he does. Uh, there's an animation in the port where he's got an axe and he does his thing um, hey there it is <laughs> but in game he's gonna be on top of the turret so as for the skin I like the skin of the the ship it's a, it's pretty nice uh, it's classy it's not it's not overdone like I, I like this skin um, and I like the animated uh, camos and stuff like that opens the door for some more customization and as far as camos down the road Rocket League does this really well, where they have a whole bunch of different like can camos and stuff that you can put on your. It, it's just it's purely decorational, but it, it can make your ships look ridiculous. So I hope they go. I hope they give us more options as far as like animated camos and stuff like that in the future. Uh, some of you may disagree with that, but I personally like that. As for a commander, uh, Optimus, not so good. So uh, yeah. That is the thing. So, without further ado, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we are on shards, and we spawn middle. Now, remember, I'm not. I'm using the skin, but I'm not using the commander for um, the Optimus Prime. Uh, the Transformers battleships commanders are just tank build commanders. Um, I don't see the point of having them. In both instances, you have better options, uh, or at least the same option. For the Americans, you have Willis Lee. Uh, you've already had him for a while. You probably already have point, uh, points spent on him, promotion orders spent on him. So there's really no reason to go to the Optimus Prime unless you just want the voiceover. In which case, more power to you. But uh, I honestly think that a tank build Iowa or a tank build, uh, you know, commander on an Iowa is just a dumb idea. Um, you, you literally take away all of the advantages that the Iowa has and you just throw it in the dumpster. Um, but that being said, we are going to have a, a pretty good game. And we're not alone. The, the team is going to have a relatively good game overall. But it's going to be a hard-fought win. 
Uh, so we're gonna have to buckle in and do the best that we can. Now, right off the bat, you notice I, I sort of went in reverse a little bit. You'll see that I do that a lot on this map in particular, this one in Estuary. It's a small map, and you spawn within range of being shot by at least a third of the team on the enemy side. And actually, if you want to can call it by uh, what it is, it's actually two-thirds of the enemy team because you actually are spawned in a position to be shot from the left as well. Uh, but us backing up, we're outside of the range of the two battleships on our left. So we are focusing the hipper here. We're going to try to get him off the board as quickly as possible. But he's going to do something a little bit... Uh, it's kind of a good move, but at the same time, not really. He's going to push all the way over to the mountain on our side. That keeps me from being able to shoot him. But he's also, if you look at the map, putting himself in a perf perfect position to get countered by the two battleships at sea on our team that are coming back my direction. Now, I'm not a proponent for guys running from their spawn. I'm, you know, in a domination, I'm all about that win your side. So uh, I'm going to try to hold the mid. It is my job as the battleship that spawns mid to try to prevent everybody from doing anything. Okay, so I'm keeping my head on a swivel. I'm trying to figure out where the most damage for me lies. And that, of course, is going to be between B and C. Okay, our destroyer gets C early, which is huge for our team. Uh, but there is a cruiser heading in to C to uh, intercept. So that destroyer needs to get the heck out of there. Uh, I believe it's a Cleveland. Now, we fire the guns here just a little early because uh, we didn't notice that we were going to hit the, the mountain there. Uh, if we'd have waited half a second longer, we'd have shot through the gap between the, the peaks. But uh, it, it is what it is. You get a little antsy sometimes. You look at a good shot, and you're just like, oh, my God, I can hit it. No, you can't. But... We're going to get over here. We're not going to push all the way out, and we're definitely not going to stay broadside to these guys because that's just asking for trouble. Now, we've already lost a York, which is not, not good. Uh, but it is what happens occasionally. Uh, we are definitely going to put ourselves in, and oh my god, two Citadels on that Iowa at basically maximum range. That was a bad loop. Uh We're up to 55,000 damage already. So yeah, we're going to just nose in here and try to keep ourselves in a good position to affect the enemy and enemy just hold everybody off. Now here's the problem with where I'm at. I'm in the central position which means I can affect every- oh my god that dispersion is disgusting. Wait for it! Pow! <laughs> you gotta love it. Three overpins and a citadel hit. Not too shabby. That'll make him think twice about engaging me again. He's lucky to be alive, let's be real. That dispersion was disgusting. Uh, but now I'm in a little bit of a pickle. I've got a Helena pushing in from my right side, which is not preferable. I know, I've had a couple videos without it, so uh, I figure I'd throw a couple in this one. But, uh, oh my god, what is this dispersion game? My Iowa has clearly realized that uh, it likes the Optimus Prime camo as well, but it absolutely hates the, the Optimus Prime Commander and is glad that I kept William Sims on here. That's what it is. It's just rewarding me for it. It's like, ah, thank you Spartan for not putting Optimus in, in me. I don't want it. He can sit on the deck all he wants, but do not put him in my conning tower. <laughs> there can be only one Commander. Wait, that's, that's the Highlander. Never mind. <laughs> uh, anyway, we've got Odin over here who's about to present a beautiful broadside for us to shoot at and so it would just be rude of us not to uh oh hello helena nope nope that's a big mountain spartan i'm fairly confident you're not going to shoot over it but if you wait you might actually get a shot come on a little longer hold fire fire the guns and that dispersion again did you see how tight they were ah and we get one hit? Darn it! I told you, my weakness is shooting over objects. It's hard for me to really tell where I need to aim. If I'd have waited a little bit longer though, I didn't realize he was going to come out like this. I figured he was going to tuck in behind the island and, and capture the base. But, you know, it is what it is. Now we're in a bit of a pickle here. I've got an Odin and a Helena on my right. I've got two Iowas and a Miyoko on my left. Now the Miyoko, in his credit, has uh, bugged out. He is like, nope, I ain't about this life. And I can't really blame him. Uh, but 
we can no longer sit here and tank everybody. They're starting to spread out, and that's going to be a problem for me. Uh, we're going to get as much damage as we can off these guys, obviously, and we lose our front gun temporarily there, which is definitely a pain in my backside. Yeah, I, I chose a different word that time. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's not perf- Oh, I did it anyway! Stop it! Okay, but Odin is coming out broadside. We take the shot with the one gun we have. We get the rear gun on him as well, and that's hopefully going to do some significant damage. We are at 94 right now. We get uh, one overpin and two, two shatter- or two bounces. Come on, game. All of our RNG has been used up in the first moments of this, like, engagement. It's a shame. It really, really is. But, we're in Iowa. We can stand here. We can tank for quite a while. We have a destroyer out there between us and the Iowa, which means that we have the chance to just distract these guys long enough for that destroyer to go off and torp the ever-living crap out of them. Now, we got a broadside on this Iowa, and I'm thinking this is going to be a citadel for sure. Uh, except it's not. They, ain't, they end up hitting a little bit high. Uh, so we get three penetrations, one overpin, so not bad, but not what I was hoping for anyway. So we're going to aim a little bit lower. He is slowing down, uh, probably feeling some type of way about the smoke screen that's between me and him. Now, obviously, this was a terrible decision. Uh, I'll go through my thought process, why I went broadside when I did, and that is because these guys are flanking me from the right, I have to engage them. The cruiser that's out there is not going to be able to hold them off on, on his own, and I needed to begin this turn. Now, I picked a terrible time to do it because then that Iowa citadel me, which of course he would. Uh, I can't citadel anybody else other than the two at the beginning. <laughs> uh, but, but they can definitely citadel me. Now, I get a good shot off at the Odin here, and uh, we're, we're doing okay damage. We get one more chance to fire, and they get through just in the nick of time. And that one's going to be a painful hit. 7,600 damage, much better. Uh, it's still not an amazing hit, but considering the angle that we're shooting at and how we had to rush it, it was a pretty decent hit. Now, the Iowa that's behind me isn't going to be my problem. If you look in by A, there is another battleship down there, and he is currently focused on me because I'm the only thing he can shoot other than the three cruisers and a freaking destroyer that's there. But I digress. It's me, and I know I'm dead because I just got citadeled again by the Richelieu. But I was trying to cut him off. We end up getting another good hit on the uh, the Odin there with five penetrations that time, bringing our damage total up to 144,000 damage. We did everything that we could. We didn't get any kills. It wasn't a glorious fight, but it was it was darn sure a heck of a stand considering how many people were shooting us for so long. Now. I'm not going to lie, I was a little frustrated when I looked over and saw that the Richelieu was shooting me when there was literally half the friendly team out in front of him, and this Bismarck was coming up behind him. But then I look at the uh, Bismarck and realize that he had three kills, so clearly he's not been slouching. And then you got this Odin all the way over in the corner of the map, we won't even discuss him, but he's fending off a Yudachi, so we'll have to give him the benefit of the doubt as well. Uh, I don't know how long the Yudachi's been trying to kill him, but, so far, other than taking that one right there, he's done an okay job of not being killed. Uh, but, we're going to try to push forward here. We've got the Bismarck and the Cap currently. That's going to stop them. Now, they do have two Caps. They can still win this fight. If we do not capture the bases, they win. Now, Bismarck gets the dispersion of dreams on the backside of this Richelieu. And the, the Richelieu and Jean Bart have a very interesting rear end. They have very flat armor behind the uh, superstructure, and they have a lot of secondaries mounted on there. It's kind of a stair step, so you can get a lot of penetrations from the rear really easy in a battleship. Uh, but, Bismarck has other problems. Yudachi's closing in. Good news for the Bismarck, he's not going to have to worry about the Yudachi's torpedoes yet, because he's going to have the island between them. He's not staying in the cap. And while I don't think that this was necessarily the right move, it at least works out in his favor. Because he should have been focused on the Yudachi from the moment the Yudachi like, got spotted. And he shot one more time at the Richelieu, and that allows this Yudachi to just come in here and send all of his torps. Now, luckily, I think the Yudachi had already used his torpedo reload booster because he could have just dumped, what, uh, 16 torpedoes into the 
the general vicinity of this Bismarck. But because the Bismarck is able to continue to sail in a straight line, he only takes two torpedoes. It's unfortunate, but he does survive. Uh, and that is where this game is pretty much wrapped up. The fact that this Bismarck survives means that there's not a whole lot of hope for this Helena. There's not a whole lot of hope for the Yadachi. The Bismarck, if you guys remember, has a six kilometer surface detection on its sonar. So I'm assuming that is running currently because that's how the Helena is spotted. Because the Helena is behind a smoke screen. And so I'm assuming that the Bismarck so uh, sonar is running. And you're going to see that uh, in a moment, the Yadachi is going to get in close and uh, realize that the sonar for the the Bismarck is running. Maybe it's only five and a half kilometers, but either way, this Yudachi is about to find out because he's going to run right into it. Wait for it. As soon as the battleship starts turning all the way around, this Yudachi is going to pop up. Which means the Yadachi was in a uh, trailing position. He was trying to sneak up behind him. Uh, which is a terrible position for a Yadachi because you're not going to, unless you have the long range torpedoes, which I don't believe he does. Uh, I believe he has the 80 knot screamers. So you're not going to chase people down with torpedoes because they only have 8 kilometer range. And that's if you've got them upgraded. They only have 7 kilometer base. So keep that in mind. You don't want to be chasing people you want to be out ahead of them you want to be getting broadside you know salvos on people uh, if you can but the Yudachi was spotted just a moment there he is and that's the moment that the uh, sonar runs out <laughs> it's unfortunate but that was definitely five and a half kilometers so uh, you know it happens but the Bismarck is going to turn towards the Yudachi, assuming that there are torpedoes on the way, and the Yudachi is going to make the absolute best possible change of course that he could to try to kill this Bismarck. He's going to turn back on himself, and that's going to allow the Bismarck to be torpedoed from the side, but you don't have a whole lot of health, Yudachi, and you've got a lot of people looking at you, so those torps are never going to reach the target. Unfortunately, Bismarck narrowly misses out on his Kraken, Odin coming in and yoinking it right at the last second. But 144,000 damage done, second on the team with 2,440 base XP with no kills. You can see Bismarck, even though he had four kills, didn't really have a whole lot of damage. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.